What's up guys, welcome back to Custodian's YouTube channel and yet another whiteboard session. Today we're going to be covering SSL, TLS, following on from the BGP video i done which took off and it actually got a lot of good feedback. Um, hopefully we're going to do more of them, uh, we're going to try and get them uploaded on a more regular basis. Can't say how regular because we're quite busy here at the moment with projects and that needs to take priority. Um, so yeah, we're going to jump into what is SSL, what is TLS and how it affects VPN, so stay tuned. Okay guys, so SSL. SSL is um, a secure socket layer. Um, it is a method of encrypting traffic between a client's web browser and a web server. SSL was, I believe, 1996 was the latest version. So it's, it's quite an old technology. Um, and the newest thing to come along is TLS, which is transport layer security. So TLS is very similar to SSL, but because of SSL being what everyone knows and loves, we call it SSL nowadays, but really we mean TLS. So what actually is SSL, TLS, and what has it got to do with VPN? So first of all, to cover the basis, you've got a couple of types of SSL or TLS certificates. These certificates are normally domain validation or extended validation. They're the two main ones you'll come across. Um, domain validation is exactly how it sounds. So you buy an SSL certificate, you edit a text record on your domain's um, DNS and they validate that you own the domain. Brilliant. Um, that, it's not a good way of proving that the company's legit. Anyone can do that. However, with an extended validation, there's a bit more of a process to getting validated and getting the SSL certificate. So you might go through a process where you have to send off documents, they might need ID. Um, it all varies depending on what sort of certificate you get. But I think for now, we'll just focus on domain and extended validation. There's also green bar extended validation, which is like what PayPal has. So when you go in the address bar, they've got a little green bit there with PayPal Inc US. Um, so yeah, SSL and TLS, pretty much the same thing. TLS is just the newest version. So what actually happens when you browse a web without SSL and with SSL? And I will use SSL throughout this video because it's what everyone knows, but I also mean TLS. So when you browse a web, you go to google.com and your computer sends a request to the Google servers. Google servers find what you requested and then send it back to you. Simple stuff. When you access the web, or visit a website, should I say, on an unencrypted connection, i.e. not SSL, you, your traffic can get sniffed by people. Um, normally on public networks, this happens a lot. People log on to the free Wi-Fi, go onto their favorite site, and just, they just don't understand what kind of security implications there are. So what we look at doing is we protect our sites with SSL. What this does is it encrypts the traffic between the client and the server. So it's, think of it as me giving you a letter that is just as it is. Anyone in the middle can just grab that letter and take it. If I put it in the safe, and only you know the pin, I've scrambled that lock, give you the safe, and because you're the only one who's got the key to decrypt it, or in this case, open the safe, you can open the safe and get your letter out. So the people in the middle can't actually see what's going on. They can just see traffic. Um, you can get free ones. Common one is Let's Encrypt. You know, it's nice and easy to set up. Um, Certbot is a script for Let's Encrypt certificates. So if you use Certbot on your server, you can just literally type a few commands and you've got an SSL certificate. Um, you know, it's, it's not a complicated thing, but the thing I want to show you is basically how, how it works on a more, not technical level, but a, a bit more of an understanding level. So if this is your client, and this is your server. When you're communicating without SSL, anyone can see this, yeah? But when you've got SSL, there's an exchange of keys. So you've got a private key and a public key. The public key is what your client will use and the private key will stay on the server. It's the only place it should live, private, it's the server. So what effectively happens is when you browse with SSL, your client will basically wrap all of that up, wrap all the data up, 
mark it with this public key, send it to the server, and because this server is the only one that can open that, you don't have to worry about your traffic getting intercepted. The only way it's a problem is this, is this if this server has poor security and someone manages to compromise it and get hold of the private key, the attacker can now grab that traffic, take it, use the decryption key and, or private key, decryption key, and decrypt it and then read what's in it. So why, why is this a problem? You might think you've got nothing important to hide. Until you go on Amazon, you buy your favorite cuddly toy, your payment details are being transferred across the web. So from your browser to Amazon's browsers or whatever payment gateway they use, your, tra your card details are being transmitted. Now, if that was transmitted without SSL, anyone can read it. They've now got your long card number, security code, the expiry date, everything they need to make payments out of your account. If you encrypt it, however, they just get a load of numbers and letters and it, it just looks like gibberish. It can't actually be read by the human unless they have the private key. So yeah, long and short of it, it just kind of wraps your data in a unopenable box. The only person that can open it is wherever it's going. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the lowdown on SSL, TLS, but I did mention about VPNs. So it's very similar in a way that a VPN encrypts all your traffic, whereas SSL encrypts web traffic, so HTTP. So I use VPNs on my laptops, on my phone, because when I'm out in public connecting to public Wi-Fi, it encrypts all of my traffic, not just my web traffic. That way I can go on an unencrypted site within the VPN that is unencrypted. But because it's within the VPN, the VPN traffic is encrypted. Um, you'll find a lot of VPNs are also used by corporates to have a secure connection from, say, working at home into the office because it gives that security and it also masks your IP address so people can't kind of see what you're doing. But more on that for another video. We'll go in depth on that one probably next time if I can convince the guys to do it. So yeah, basic rundown on SSL. I don't know how long this video has gone on for, but I haven't dribbled too much. So yeah, we'll see you all in the next video, guys. Stay tuned. Thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual jazz, and we'll see you in the next video.